Hi, my name is Angelica and I work at Lumen Learning and I'm excited to be here with Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Devlin um, to talk about her experience using Lumen One in her modality. Hi, Debbie, do you think you could give us a brief introdu introduction about yourself, your institution, your students, and what modality you teach in? Hi, Angelica, yes, absolutely. I'm glad to be here. I teach at Prosperic State University, which is kind of a um, medium size. We're a PhD granting university um, located in Appalachia in Western Maryland. We have about four to 5,000 undergraduates, um, a large Pell Grant population, and I teach um, introductory stats in a face-to-face -face, um, small group active learning classroom with about 24, 25 students in it. Thank you. And what made you decide to use Lumen One? So um, I was a, an early adopter of the Lumen One and um, understood uh, what its mission was to uh, attempt to mitigate the achievement gap between um, students from the predominant culture and, and students who um, may have challenges. I was a non-traditional student myself, um, and I have a big heart for, for students who um, come at college uh, without a lot of support at home. So I was eager to see these materials and uh, and see for myself, you know, the types of changes that they made in the classroom. Um, and I was, I was pleased with what I saw just in the materials themselves, um, uh, in the way that they present data sets, in the way that they uh, present the, the concepts. It's written to an undergraduate student taking a 100 level class. It's not like you may find in other stats texts where you've taken a, um, um, a, a text at a, at a higher comprehension level and just kind of adapted to 100 level students. This is really meeting these students where they are. Um, and, and once I saw that, I was highly eager to use it in the classroom. Can you describe your current approach to teaching introductory statistics? So um, philosophically, uh, I am all about active learning. I am all about providing all the opportunities to put that learning load on the student with high expectations and enable them and empower them to be able to obtain the information themselves. And that's why I use the, the small group active learning approach in the classroom. Um, I'm, I'm a rather compassionate teacher. Um, I, I do like to meet my students where they are and uh, try not to make assumptions in the classroom. So these materials were, were good for that because I was able to adapt them to exactly my teaching style in the classroom. I don't know if that answers your question, Angelica. Was there something else you were going for there? Deep, dive a little bit deeper into what you mean by your teaching style um, and also just kind of the tactics that you use when you're engaging with students and face to face. So like logistically, um, how how kind of a classroom works is uh, I do have students do a pre reading before um, class and, and uh, I know that only about a third of my students will have done that reading. So I kind of embed in a mini lecture at the beginning of the classroom, just the essentials of what they'll need to be able to do the activity that day. And then I have an activity for them to do, which marches them through um, obtaining the concepts and skills required. Uh, so I'll, I'll have the students, and I have a learning assistant in the classroom who's an undergraduate peer. Uh, so we, um, we, we set the students upon a task. Um, it's structured, it's highly structured. The students have roles to play at the table and data um, and answers are recorded. Um, they're using laptops for um, uh, to access the tools. So they're actively doing stats, actively doing math are required at the tables using technology. And then we circulate through the tables and guide the conversations, trying to elicit 
um, responses from the students without actually providing answers until they emerge naturally at the tables. And uh, then at the end, we'll wrap it up and uh, just kind of tie a bow on, on what they've learned that day and then send them off to work in their study plan or AKA homework um, to, to kind of settle those ideas in their mind. And then the next class starts with a recall where we came from. Uh, this is what we're going to be doing today. Let's get our hands dirty and do the work and then wrap it up at the end. And then that just continues on through a module until um, right before uh, we, we have a formal assessment, we'll do a summary. So there's like a summary activity that covers all of the information, all of the most important points that are um, going to be appearing on the assessment. And the good thing um, about being able to use this style in mathematics and statistics in particular is the cumulative nature of the material. I, I, I will build the, um, foundational layers of skills as we go and and then at the end when we're doing the summary it's really just um, them doing statistics using the data analysis tools and then um, me and my learning assistant just kind of reminding them of the underlying concepts that are uh, that are forming the results of that analysis Thank you. And how do you connect some of the items that the content that's in the platform with what you're doing in the classroom? How do you connect those back to each other? So um, the, of course, the whole thing is study plan driven, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and within the study plan, you have the, the learn it, the apply it and the self check. So the learn it becomes the, the pre-reading portion. They're usually three pages long, three short pages, they're interactive. So it's something that the students can dig into on their own. And I advise them, pardon me, <clears throat> I got a little frog in my throat. And I advise them to um, not overthink <clears throat> the learn it. They, they're they just there to gain exposure to the landscape that we're going to be exploring the next day. So I try to make it very low stakes, um, uh, very, you know, low impact. I don't want them to ever feel like they're having to teach themselves. And that's one of the, the big pushbacks that you'll get in an active learning class. And then the apply it I have taken the um, apply it pages from Lumen and utilizing the um, in the instructor resources, there are um, instructor guides for how to use the apply it's in class. I've taken those together with the online version and merge them into an active learning worksheet uh, that the students will use in class on paper and pencil. And um, then I've developed a, a separate uh, recording sheet for them to be able to, to get points for doing that work in the classroom. Um, so it's uh, just between zero and five points, depending on how far they get through the activity, um, you know, as a as a classroom or as a table within the classroom. Um, and and then their study plan, they'll go and do their self check and uh, and, and the, the graded portions of the study plan. So the graded portions um, our study plan, which includes, you know, everything that they need to be able to get those answers right in the self checks and they're, they're low stakes points because they're, they're not graded individually, you know, the items, the questions aren't, it's just a completion thing. Um, sometimes early in the semester in particular, I will do a reading quiz in the first five minutes of the class. So that's a graded item. Uh, and then the bulk of their grades come from how they perform within the activities inside the class. And then um, on our paper and pencil assessments that I write separately from the materials. Would you be willing to share some examples of some of those like, you know, documents they use or even just how you kind of utilize the platform? 
So, um, and I don't, I don't use the platform at all in the classroom. I mean, there's slides, but I'm not a, I'm not a slides kind of teacher. I'm, I'm more of a let's, let's all put our hands in the dirt and do it together kind of teacher. So um, I, I've never looked really deeply into the slides, but I, I'll show you. Let me see if I can share my screen, and I'll show you. So this is an example. Um, uh, I should go and try and find the accompany sheet that goes with this. So these are learning community activities and we have learning community points and learning community points come from everything that we do um, in our groups. And I switch the groups for every test. Um, I can get more into the uh, logistics behind switching the groups. There's a lot that goes into it, but um, we switch the groups for every test, so they're always working with you know slightly different group of people because the learning edge happens when you're slightly uncomfortable. So we we want the groups to be happy but a little uncomfortable. <laughs> so uh, we have these learning community activities, um, and they work together to answer the questions in each of the following sections. They have a facilitator whose job is to keep everyone on track. Uh, they have a recorder whose job, we use whiteboards on top of the table with the whiteboard pens and the recorder records all the answers. And the reporter, when we come around and look at their answers and ask them questions about it, the reporter's job is to report what they have discovered together. And then each time they have a new section, they switch those roles. So I use the objectives from the instructor guide um, the formulas and definitions I take from the instructor guide and um, and then I, I, I separate the apply it <clears throat> quite literally into pages like apply it page one online becomes part one on the in class sheet and I'll, I'll pull over the the text from the um, uh, from the platform and just, you know, leave spaces for the questions. And I'll sometimes I'll read, well, probably quite often reword the, the questions or, um, or what's available in the text to, to more target, hey, you guys are doing this together. So um, let's use the CDC data to calculate some probabilities, you know, just like tiny little words like that, or just changing things into a, how could you accomplish this task rather than accomplish this task? So there is some rewording that goes on. So that would, that would have been page one of 8.4, um, or you may, your numbers may be different than my numbers. Um, these are the same numbers. The, the default numbers for lumen, but it's probability distributions. Oh, this is 8.5. This is the normal distribution continued. It's just the one I happen to pull up here. Um, and this would be page two of that particular apply it. And um, and then, oh, that was just a two page apply it. And then right at the end here, some groups will finish before other groups and inevitably they wanna say, can we leave early? So I added this um, to, for a little classroom management uh, to, you know, if you're finished, continue on the next page. And if your group finishes early, I just want you to review all your answers one by one and go around the table and make sure everyone is on on, on the, the same page here, make sure they all have the same understanding. You may have one student who's reticent to talk because they're really um, not able to process the information as quickly as other students at that table. And I'm trying to foster um, a learning environment of compassion for all so that um, the students don't, you know, kind of default to some behaviors born of impatience, right? I think all the instructors know what I'm talking about. Um, and the students can get hasty with one another. So uh, once they review, have reviewed everything, these questions um, come from the tail end of the instructor guide uh, in instructor resources. And they're just questions for reflection. So in the instructor resources, one of the options uh, for classroom strategy is to hand out note cards to the students 
and have them write some answers down on it to give back to you as they walk out the door. I don't use that. Um, it, it's just too much for me to manage in, in all the papers that I have to manage. Um, these also come from wrap up questions at the end, which they're similar, those two questions. So I've just kind of reword them some in some ways and, and throw them onto the end here. So the question might be, uh, you know, how can we use statistical tools, dot, dot, dot. And then the, this part here is the part where the instructor guide is giving suggestions for what the instructor might ask of a whole class discussion to guide that conversation. But since I've got pods of students, I just take those and kind of reframe them to help them guide their own conversation through that. So there's a, there's a lot of ad, ad, adaptation, adaption that is that is uh, gone on between the instructor guides and this particular piece that I've created. And it works for me. All instructors are unique. All classroom environments are unique, um, dependent upon that instructor's teaching style. These took me between an hour and two hours to create a piece. I created them in my first semester. I'm happy with them. And they work for my classroom management perfectly. They're my voice all the way through. And uh, where I've kind of changed the lumen voice to sound like my voice sometimes. And I really, really recommend doing that work for your classroom and then just making small edits in subsequent semesters so that the lumen materials become your materials. Um, and then your materials support your teaching and that homogeneity of voice all the way through the materials I found um, for me has been an incredibly successful teaching strategy. I'm curious about what statistical tools or technology that you use in the classroom. So um, I'm seeing some of the um, problems here might require students to use some additional resources. Are you using the embedded um, tools in the platform or do you have them um, to use outside, outside tools in the classroom? I love the, the tools that are embedded in the software. They're ideal. I use them. Um, and what I do at the, let me see if I can get to my, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing for a second and see if I can get to my Canvas course and show you what that looks like. So, um, this is my Math 109. First of all, um, I do want to just point out that I did use, um, if it'll come up, I did use the visual syllabus, which I absolutely loved um, being able to put that together. Here you can see a uh, learning community is a quarter of their point. Study plans just 10%. And then uh, the quizzes, I made 25%. Um, I found that the quizzes, um, uh, to be real <laughs> here, were not of uh, a homogeneous boys. They were, they, they, they were difficult for the students. So I ended up dropping uh, th the three lowest quiz scores out of the 11 that I, I applied during the semester. And then exams paper and pencil exams. Uh, so this is, I had full control over this, so that was 40%. But I really did enjoy that visual syllabus and really re recommend that. But in modules, right at the very top of the course, I put the statistical analysis tools and I put links to each of them. So um, they have their learning plans here, like module one, module two, so on and so forth. Uh, and then um, right at the very top are the statistical analysis tools, and these are the ones that we use throughout the semester, and they could just click straight on them and access them from there. Nice. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So usually do you have the, the students come in, um, do you tell them to anticipate to bring a computer? Because uh, it sounds like there's some group work, so do you usually have one person assigned on the computer helping with the work, or do they use their mobile applications as well? 
Yeah, the very cool thing about the tools is you can access them on your phone. So um, we there were there was always at least one person in the classroom with a laptop, you know, in the table, pardon me, at the table with a laptop. But everyone, it was so easy for them to just grab that phone out of their back pocket and pull the tools up and then they could all do it individually, which was ideal. Now, um, I have um, reconfigured one of the classrooms at the university that I'm going to start using this fall. I'm very excited about it. It was a large 60 computer lab and um, all of us who were involved in active learning and math have convinced the university to make half of that large room pods um, for active learning and then half of that large room 30 computers so I no longer have the the worry about them not being able to have their tools but when I did exams um, I had a paper and pencil version of the exam where you know they answered conceptual questions or or did calculations and then I had a computer portion of the exam and I went to a computer lab to administer my exam so that when it got to the computer portion they were able to have access to these tools and uh, were able to actually do statistics um, in a, a scenario uh, in order to answer that portion of the test it was probably about a um, 30 percent of the test was probably on the on the statistical tools and it and I have to tell you this I'm very excited about um, we did a survey at the, our own instant you know within our department uh, those of us who are teaching statistics did a survey on our students at the end and the um, proportion of students who walked away from this class feeling good about their ability to do statistics on their own was incredibly high and um, and even a little bit, we had we had you know, uh, we had uh, a, a different categories of ability to do a little bit, um, very much, very very comfortable or something like that. And even a little bit, there was only you know maybe one or two out of twenty five that said that they were uncomfortable doing statistics. And these tools, I think, are what really helped that. Thank you. Um, are there any other faculty resources you, in Lumen One that you use to do face-to-face -face teaching? Um, I'm just gonna go through here. I opened up some things at the very end in the time between the last day of classes and the, and the day of the exam and told students to just get in there and get some points, right? So, but normally you wouldn't see any interventions to, to view because I used these. Um, and I, um, yeah, I, I adapted this. Um, this is a terrible example because it's, it's one that the student opened and closed and didn't finish. So it says you missed every single question. But uh, I, this is what I wanted to get to. I changed this right here. So I, I changed the text for my automated messages and my interventions um, to, uh, to, to be specific to our needs. Um, so that, that's what I really oh, want. Have you seen like students be receptive to like your message, to the automated messages? Have you seen um, an increase in students uh, showing up to office hours? Um, so with the automated feature, it's a feature that I have been doing manually for some time. And I didn't notice any difference in the students' reaction because I had been sending those out using a spreadsheet and copy and pasting text um, for various situations. Uh, and, and what I did notice was um, a lot more free time on my end for having the software do it. So I was really excited about that. Um, but trying to get students to office hours, you know, is hard um, for the students who did come using them as like public testimony to other students you know yeah go to office hours it's great there right um, but uh, what I did notice was in the beginning the students would do the first attempt on the quiz and no matter how much I tried to forecast to them don't just go in and do the second one they would right so between inside the classroom really 
trying to explain that. And then um, I began watching the time sensitive interventions really closely. And for about a week, I, every time I would see one, um, it would come through on my Apple watch because it would push through to my email and I would stop drop and get myself to a computer and do a time sensitive intervention and that's and after the end of that week students started slowing down and doing that second attempt later so um that that was nice <laughs> and um i i just want to ask is there any other tips or any tricks that you want to give to any other instructors that are like thinking about using lumen one to teach face to face is, is there any other helpful advice you could give them if they're kind of still struggling about how to adapt their course to meet it so um down here in faculty resources um in these evidence-based teaching practices um it's been a long time since I first encountered evidence-based teaching practices. I did a Lumen Circle, it feels like ages ago. Um, and then I've done a lot of professional development in, in inclusive classrooms. Um, so between, um, and I also did some master's level work in education as opposed to mathematics. So between all of that, you know, I've developed this philosophy of uh, how to let my whole classroom treat the whole student. But Lumen has really um, aggregated a lot of that information here in the evidence-based teaching practices. And one of the things I want to make sure before I say this, that it's really there, um, I'm going to go to belonging. This has made all the difference. Um, representation, intersectionality, mitigating bias. Pedagogical, pedagogical partnerships are, are hard in a 100 level course, but possible. I've experimented with them a little, but not enough to, to really tell anyone. But down at the bottom, there's a mini reflection. I really recommend applying that just, just in your own time to your, to your own teaching. Uh, it's helped me tremendously uh, to meet my students where they are and Lumen is the only platform that I know that is interested in kind of like this holistic view of the instructor and the student melded together. Uh, and, and that can make a, a huge difference in your classroom. Um, I just want to pop back up to faculty resources and point out that in the engagement center um, here under resources, there's your visual syllabus. I love that thing. Um, these are the instructor guides that I used to adapt. Um, I'm gonna go to that same one I was looking at. One, two, three, four, five, here it is, continued, yeah. Um, these are the instructor guides that I adapted. Uh, they, they have the guide portion in the beginning, and then they have um, what a student might see. But you see, it's, it's geared toward the instructor using it um, along with the PowerPoint. And, and this is one way that Lumen can work. Um, you, you can have the the slides up on the projector. You can have this in your back pocket and then have the students at computers if you're in a computer lab and you march through the apply it page as the students are doing it on their computers in the classroom. And then you would break break away from that, pull the whole class back together for these one or two minute whole class discussions where you elicit feedback from individuals in the classroom and then move on to the next piece. So it's, it's you know, like the, the, the difficulty with that is that uh, students will kind of uh, in secret just be working ahead or 
um, uh, you know, not, it, it's, it's, um, for some instructors, that's a great classroom management tool. For me, oh, it's terrible. So I, I, I really like to do the paper and pencil version of the Apply It, but that's how you can use the Apply It um, with the slides and with the computers in the classroom. What I did was, you know, I, I took all this stuff out and put it in a Word document and, and created my own activities for inside the classroom. But I want to show you, um, for me and my learning assistant, as we're walking around the tables and helping people, I adapted this too. And um, let me see if I can find that. I thought I, I pulled it out. Oh, maybe it's a Word. It's a Word file. Um, I don't know if I'm sharing a screen or if I'm sharing my I still see your web browser. Let me change it. All right, how about now? There it is. Now I see, thank you. You got a document, okay, good. So let me make it bigger. All right, so what I did was I adapted this for classroom use as well, just by making it something that we could just glance at and see real easily. So, um, you know, I, I just made sure all the questions for the most part were on the same page. I've got the anticipate errors and the formative feedback that was helpful to use in the classroom. Um, because they're, these are good anticipations of where students might go wrong. Um, and it's my understanding that as these materials were under their beta test in the classroom prior to getting pulled into the um, all together for us to use in our classroom, that uh, there was some testing that went along and, uh, and um, student feedback was elicited and you know it was observed where students would tend to make mistakes. So a lot of that is in the anticipate errors and formative feedback there. Um, and, it, and it is all designed to, to, to guide students through these layers of cumulative understanding to get to the end to hypothesis testing and, and confidence intervals, or I would say that in the reverse, confidence intervals, then hypothesis, hypothesis testing. But you can see how it's all just really spot check and, and we can just glance and see it. And this is one of the very few things that I print out in, in color <laughs> when, I, when I print my uh, everything else, you know, we try to save that, that ink. And then these class discussion, topic one, topic two, those are the questions that I stuck. I started doing this about mm, a third of the way through the semester when I had a couple of groups that were just stars, you know, and they would finish everything early, good understanding, and then they would twiddle their thumbs and want to leave. And I didn't want a whole table getting up and leaving because it made everyone else feel like they wanted to leave. So I added these discussion questions. So this is the question. And then I, I pulled from this information and then um, I just did the apply it myself and, and um, you know, quickly in the, in the platform and uh, just, you know, came up with some other questions to kind of guide that discussion for them. Um, and that, that's what I was talking about earlier after the activity recommends students complete exit cards. I don't use the exit cards. It didn't work for me, but it might work for someone else, right? So I just wanted to point out that that's there. And all of that in the, um, I'm going to stop sharing, all of that in the um, instructor resources. There's really a, a lot in there uh, to, to stick around and find out what will work for you. Um, Anything else about trying to use? The platform is easy to use. I, I like that. I've taught intro stats um, um, using um, an in, a simulation based inquiries um, from one of the other publishers. I've taught intro stats in a, a more traditional format. The, um, the content delivery, the order of it is more traditional in the Lumen One materials, which I really like. Um, I, I didn't need to reorder my modules. 
uh, which was good for me and made it easy for me, but that may not be the truth for everyone out there, I understand. Um, but reordering the modules is easy. One of my colleagues uh, did reorder the modules and, and that worked for him. Um, I think I think the thing I really liked about it from an instructor, strictly from an instructor point of view, just looking at my day and my desk, I, I said out loud many times, this is so easy. <laughs> and, and I have never said that about a statistics course, even when I used, you know, like the traditional, my stats lab, because um, the, the, I think the thing that made me say it's so easy is because the book, the pictures, the names, the, enormous number of data sets are all relevant and current and gentle and inclusive. And that took a weight off my shoulders. Every time I teach stats, that's a worry for me. And that's what I, um, I think is the, the power behind the Lumen One materials. Wow, thank you, Debbie. I think you provided a lot of helpful tips and advice to other faculty members that are thinking about implementing it or even doing it for the fall or the spring. So I, I wanna thank you again for just joining us, sharing your advice, sharing your um, how your students have grown from this. And, and we're just thankful to have educators like you um, with the Lumen team. Thank you, thanks. It's been a pleasure, really. Thank you.